Today I'll show you how to make this teeny teen top. The entire pattern is included in this video. There are three sizes. The pattern is intended for very slender young figures, approximately 27, 28, or 29 inches under the bust, and approximately 28, 30, or 32 inches around the actual bust line. This design is suitable for double A, A, and some B cup figures. If you are knitting to fit a curvier shape and a larger one, you want bare minimum bikini, which is part of the book Ooh La La. This new pattern is being added to the book Ooh La La, and everybody who has downloaded it via a Ravelry link is going to get an additional pattern as a fun surprise. Going forward, everyone who buys Ooh La La will have this pattern included. This is a simple pattern, so I'm able to include three sizes even in the video. You'll actually see me knitting the smallest size, and that's what's on my petite dress form. However, in my opinion, if this were a real girl, I would knit her the largest size. This size is really rather overly tight around the ribs and insufficiently modest if these were real bosoms. While we're on the subject of modesty, let me quickly say that if the girl intends to actually swim in this top, you will probably want to hand stitch some thin cotton knit fabric purchased, such as t-shirt fabric, to the inside of the fabric. Don't make your needle plunge all the way through when you won't be able to see it, and it will stretch enough. Doing that will prevent undue exposure when our knitted fabric gets wet. Also, be sure you use swim-suitable elastic. When I was a young teen, I made my own bathing suit and did not know that there was a difference and bought some that wasn't swim-suitable. Ended up naked at summer camp. I would not wish to scar another young lady for life. I'm not even sure the elastic that I used then even still exists, but check, make sure. There is no real bust shaping to this pattern, but we do use full fashion decreases along both edges of the cups. And the nature of decreases means that the side of the cup hugs the body quite well, preventing gaping. In this movie, I'm not going to describe technique in detail, but where there is a technique that you might need to know more about if you're not experienced, I will include a link to a video about that technique in the program notes. I recommend acrylic yarn for this project. I used the equivalent of number two. I actually used three strands of industrial weight yarn run together. Number two is the same as sport weight. I don't think it will take more than four ounces and you're aiming for seven stitches, 10 rows per inch. Get as close as you can to that gauge in stocking it. However, don't stress over part of a stitch off because the pattern itself is so small that the size variance won't be substantial. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. Work across a span of either 180, 190, or 200 needles for the small, medium, and large versions of the pattern. But to start out, bring forward every other needle and e-wrap. Remember that if you need to review basic skills, there are links in the program notes. Usually I e-wrap with my needles all the way forward, so set the carriage to knit back from hold if you work as I do, and knit one row. Then bring those needles back out and let it knit the second and possibly even the third row from hold, and that will avoid dropped stitches. For these hem rows, we're going to knit 20 of them on every other needle at main stitch size. Now lift the e-wrap and hang each e-wrap on one of the in-between needles that has previously been unused so we get to our real target number of stitches of either 180, 190, or 200. I'm showing you multiple methods of arranging to do this and any of them are fine. Now for the three different sizes, bind off either 40, 42, or 43 stitches on each side, which will close the part of the hem that goes around the girl's back. I'm starting by showing you a bind off around the gate pegs. That's another technique that I'll link you to in case you're not good at it yet. 
That's easy to do on the side where your dominant hand is. You may have more difficulty with it on the opposite side. And if you do, you can use the technique I'm using now, which is the transfer bind off with fingertips, or you can use um, your tool. I just like to do it with fingertips. I feel I have more control and it's a little bit quicker for me. Or you can bind off the second side by skipping the stitches that are not to be bound off and working in the same direction as you did for the first batch of stitches. If you choose this method, expect the first three to six stitches to be quite difficult. And after that, you've got a little bit more working room. The issue is that we're trying so hard not to disturb those stitches that are meant to stay. We don't have a completely free range of movement. Now free all of the bound off stitches on both sides from the machine. Be sure to get all the yarn tails out of the way. We'll now shape the cups by knitting on only one half of the stitches or needles at one time. And I prefer to bring everything all the way forward and set the carriage to hold, that's H for brothers. Then move the needles I'm going to use back to upper working position. The rest of the cup is simplicity itself. We knit two rows, work a full fashion decrease using a two prong tool, knit two more rows, decrease again, and that's it. We keep on going until only four needles are working. You may need to tug on the yarn to remove any slack when passing the held needles. I am needing to. Partly, this just does happen when we work with a lot of needles in hold position. The other issue is that my sinker plate is due for maintenance and it is sitting a little lower than it ought to be. Therefore, it's abrading the held needles slightly. Not enough to mean it can't knit safely, but enough that I would have yarn loops form if I didn't be careful. On most machines, you will have a better experience if you use two claw weights, one at each edge of the work, and move them in frequently as the width of the knitting gets smaller. Keep repeating this process until only four needles are in work. I'm nearly there. And then we just knit the strap to whatever length you want on the remaining four needles. When in doubt, knit more strap length than you need because you can always shorten it. You may knit just so that the pieces will overlap at the center back and you can close the garment with a hook and eye or long enough to tie a knot or long enough to tie a bow at the back of the neck. When the strap is the length you want, remove all four stitches and pull the yarn tail through them. The second cup is easier than the first, although it's knitted in exactly the same manner, just because there aren't held needles to be careful of. Just as for the first cup, knit two rows, decrease one on each side, and repeat. Do so over and over until only four needles remain in work and knit your strap. The particular way of finishing the hem is what makes this garment more comfortable and more likely to stay where a young lady might like it to stay than a string bikini. And that is because we're going to reinforce our every other needle part of the knitting, basically mock rib with elastic. But before we do that, let's find all the yarn tails and pull them inside the hem. Also use any method that works for you to pull the hem lengthwise. That means the length the rows were knitted, like that. I'm using a spare needle here, but you can also just do it with your fingertips if you want to. The stitches are a funny shape until we do it because we used every other needle. Now, I'm using black elastic here because that's what I have a big roll of. I would recommend, of course, that you attempt to match the color of the garment better than I am able to do. Run a strip of elastic through the hem. It's smart to put a safety pin on both ends in case you accidentally lose it. To start with, your elastic should be about as long as the entire casing. Then we'll adjust it to perfectly fit the young lady. If she is not there for you to measure, 
make the elastic two inches to three inches shorter than the actual casing. Now you have some choices. You can overlap the elastic ends and sew them together, then sew the casing together over it so the elastic is completely hidden. Finishing the casing right around the elastic is covered in much more detail in the slouch hat for babies pattern. So I'll let you consult that if it's not something you're familiar with. You could also sew through both layers of knitting as well as the elastic and put hooks and eyes as a closure. The full fashion decreases keep the edge from rolling and make the cups hug the body quite nicely. You may want to make a reinforcing stitch between the cups where they join the band. The written version of this pattern is in the Ooh La La book and there is a link to where you can read more about the book and purchase it if it suits your needs in the program notes.